Hey guys, welcome to church today. So glad that you're joining in with us wherever you're joining from. I want to say a great big welcome along with my wife Heidi and myself. We're so thankful that you're coming to church at Coast Life Church today. And we're about to get into the Word of God. So I want to encourage you to do something. I want to encourage you to grab a Bible, get a Bible, get a pen, get a notebook, uh, grab your phone if that's how you like to take notes or your iPad, whatever, whatever device you want to use. But let's lean into the Word of God together today, because I believe that God has something that He wants to speak into our lives. And, and we're a responsive church. So there's a couple of ways you can respond. If you're watching on a device where you can leave comments, just, just say a great big amen. Just say a great big yes, that's right. Or even in your home, right in your living room, give God an amen every now and again because we're a responsive church and we don't respond for a speaker. We respond for ourselves because an amen isn't affirming a speaker. An amen is affirming the word of God in our lives. And so I want to encourage you today to go into the word of God because the word of God has so much power to speak into our lives and speak into our circumstances. And we've been in a collection of talks called Fully Alive. And I want to bring that collection to a finale this weekend and today on Sunday and just bring the word of God to us on this idea. And I want to talk about this topic. I want to talk about living fully alive when you're fully confined. Fully alive when you're fully confined. You know, a lot of the Bible is written to people who are in some type of confinement. And I know these circumstances are less than ideal. And I know no one wants to go through the season that we're in right now. But I want to tell you, one of the things that God does is he uses these seasons. And, and what we're going to see is there's some things we've never experienced in our life, but because we're experiencing them, we're going to be able to relate to some things in the word of God. Like we've never been able to relate to them in our lives. Like I, I believe right now that some of the things we're walking through, there's things we've never seen in God's word. You know what? It's going to come alive to us. And I'm praying that God uses this message today to help his word come alive in our lives. And you know, the idea of confinement or being contained is all through the Bible. And I want to read a portion of scripture today where God is, God is speaking through the prophet Jeremiah by way of a letter. It's, it's interesting because Jeremiah actually pins a letter, but it's, it's written by God through Jeremiah to some people who were exiled in Babylon. And it's interesting because they were confined away from their homes while today we're all confined in our homes. But I don't know that it matters. I think what really we can connect with is they were confined and they're away from their lives and they're in this season of confinement. And it's a very famous portion of scripture. You're going to probably recognize some of it when I get to it. But I'm going to read Jeremiah chapter 29 and I want to read verses 4 through 14. And bring God's word to you today. This is a letter. It actually starts off like this in verse four. And thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all the exiles whom I have sent into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon, build houses and live in them, plant gardens and eat their produce, take wives and have sons and daughters, take wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage that they may bear sons and daughters multiply there and do not decrease. But seek the welfare of the city where I've sent you into exile and pray to the Lord on its behalf. For in its welfare, you will find your welfare. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, do not let your prophets and your diviners who are among you deceive you and do not listen to the dreams that they dream. Listen, we need to be very careful to the voices we're listening to right now. We, we, need to, we need to listen hard for the voice of God and the word of God. Don't listen to the dreams that they dream. Don't believe all information that's coming. Verse 9 says this, For it is a lie that they are prophesying to you in my name. I did not send them, declares the Lord. For thus says the Lord, When 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will visit you. And I will fulfill to you my promise and bring you back to this place. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord's. Plans for welfare. Another translation says to prosper you. Welfare and not for evil. To give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me 
and come and pray to me and I will hear you and you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and I will restore your fortunes and gather you from all the nations and all the places where I've driven you, declares the Lord. And I will bring you back to the place from which I sent you in to exile. God said, I, I know the plans that I have for you. It's, it's plans to prosper you and not harm you. It's plans to, to bring you to a place of welfare and, and, and to give you a future and a hope. And God writes this letter literally through the prophet Jeremiah to people who are in confinement. And one of the things that I want to connect to the story in a powerful way, but one of the things I want to clarify is, is Jeremiah is writing to them because there's a false prophet saying it's going to be two years and Jeremiah is saying it's going to be 70 years and he was preparing them for a long season. And I just don't want you to be confused because not all circumstances are the same. They were on exile. We're facing a pandemic and we are not praying for this season to be prolonged. We are praying for this season to end quickly because people are getting sick and unfortunately there's fatalities around this pandemic. And so we're just believing in this season that God is gonna intervene, whether through natural means, a cure, a vaccine, or just by supernatural means where the name of Jesus is glorified by just seeing this pandemic stop in the mighty name of Jesus. I, I just don't want anybody to walk away confused, but we are in a season that for many of us, we thought it was gonna just be a week. We thought it was just gonna be maybe a, a few days and this season is beginning to be longer than we expected. And I wanna speak in to that feeling that all of us are getting to at this point in our life because I think one of the hardest parts of walking something out like this is you and I don't really get to choose the timeline. If I got to choose the timeline, this thing would have been done by Easter, y'all. It would have been over and we'd be on with this. But that's the reality is we're not going to get to choose the timeline. There's going to be some things beyond our control. And Jeremiah writes this letter to these people because I think we can all relate to this their plans for their lives have been interrupted. Yeah. Like they're, they're no longer in the place where they're able to move forward with the plans that they had and for, for their lives, for their families, for, for their dreams, for the things that they were wanting to accomplish in their life. And we're in a season right now where all of our plans are interrupted. And for some of it, it's, it's things that maybe in the grand scheme of things don't matter. Like you, you had a trip that was planned and now the trip is postponed. And for some people, they're walking through some serious things that they're missing out on because all of our plans have been taken away. But I love how God speaks to his people when their plans were taken away. God said, but I still know the plans I have for you that I just want to encourage somebody today that just because your plans are on hold, it does not mean that God's plans are on hold. God still has plans for your life. Another translation says it this way. God said, my thoughts are towards you. That, that my thoughts are towards you. Spurgeon, a, a famous theologian said, all of God's thoughts are drifting your way. And I know that some of you are in isolation and I know that some of your plans are interrupted and upset but I just want to tell you today, God's plans are not canceled and they are not upset. And God has thoughts that are headed to your direction and you're sitting in the middle of your thoughts. But what I want you to hear today is God is sending his thoughts into your life. And right now, Amazon deliveries may not even be able to get to your house, but God's thoughts are going to get to your house because God still knows your address. He still knows exactly where you are. He still knows the circumstances that you're walking through and he has plans for you and and by the way, they're good plans. They're plans to prosper you. They're plans to bless you. They're plans to give you a future and a hope. I need somebody to give God an amen right in the living room, right in the kitchen, from the dining room. I don't want to let my mind go there, but maybe even from the bathroom. Give God a great amen right now. God's plans are for you, that he wants to give you a future and a hope. But here's the deal, is we have an enemy that wants to take away our future. And we have a God that wants to give us our future. And right now in this season, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to do some things to position ourselves to go into the future that God has for us. And, and, and what happens when these circumstances come in is we're torn between just our, our, 
our natural way of thinking and moving into God's way of thinking. And God writes this letter to these people in their confinement so that they would shift some of the things that they're doing, so that they would make some changes in their life. And I, I wanna just speak right into our lives. And this is, this is for me, I'm not preaching at anybody. I'm preaching at myself right now because I know I need to make some shifts. If we're gonna see God move in this season, we're going to need to shift some things in our life. And that's what I'm praying for today, that there would be just an incredible shift in our life. God, God gives them some instructions on how to make the most of the season so that they can move into the future and the plans that God has for them. God still has plans for you. And I want to give you three shifts that we need to make in this season. When things are prolonged and you're in a, you're in a season that you don't want to be in, and you're in a place of confinement and you're, you're wanting it to, to end, but you don't have control over the timeline of when, of when it's going to end. And here's the first shift that we need to make is we need to shift from, uh, from a going back mentality to a moving forward mentality. Amen. I want to say it again because I didn't get a good enough amen at home. We, we need to shift from a going back mentality to a moving forward mentality. Yeah. When God writes this letter, the predominant thought of all of the people in this season was, we can't wait to go back. We can't wait to get back to our homes. We can't wait to get back to our lands. They were in a place that had strange customs for them. And they're like, we can't wait to get back to a place where it's our customs and it's the things that we're comfortable with. And we speak the language and we're familiar with the currency. And we know everything that's going on. We can't wait to go back. And God sends them a letter to say, stop saying, go back, go back. I want to talk to you about the future that I have for you, that I want to talk about the things that are going on in the future. And here's the reality is I think many of us are in this season saying, I can't wait until life goes back to normal. I can't wait till we can go back to the way things were. Listen, I believe if we go back to the way things were, we're going to miss what God wants to do in this season right now, that God doesn't want our church to go back to normal, that God doesn't want your life to go back to normal, that God wants to shift your perspective from thinking, I can't wait to go back to saying, I can't wait till we get through this because God's got something better on the other end of this than we've ever experienced in our life. Because what the enemy often uses as a setback, God uses as a setup to take us into the purposes and plans that he has for our life. And a lot of us want to go back because back is where we're comfortable. But I just want to tell you this. I love how Isaiah said it in 43, 19. God said, for I am about to do something new. See, I have already begun. Do you not see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. You know what God's saying? God doesn't create a pathway to go back. God creates a pathway to go forward, that he's creating a pathway to go into something new. And a lot of times we're afraid of change because we think what's ahead of us is worse than what's behind us. But I want to tell you, that's not what God's word promises. God's word promises that he's got new wine, that he's got fresh oil, that there's a new wind of the spirit for our lives, that there's fresh passion for us and what's ahead of us is better than what's behind us. And we believe this, that the best is still yet to come for our lives. Come on, somebody give God a praise and an amen right now, because the best is still yet to come. We, we need to shift. I don't know how long we're going to be in this season. I'm not certainly not trying to be a prophet of doom, especially around the circumstances that we're in. I don't want to see one more person get sick. I don't want to see one more person suffer for this. I want it to stop immediately. But I do know this, that for many of us, we've had this moment where we just, we, man, I hope tomorrow things will go back to normal. Now, I, I think maybe God doesn't want us to go back to normal. I think maybe God is wanting to use this as a season that takes us into a preferred future, to take us into something that he has for us. Because for many of us, if we, want, if, we, if we would admit it, there were some things in our past that we need to leave in our past. There's some things that, that were going on and are going on in our life that this might just be the moment that God's saying, you know what, I'm gonna make a road through the waters and I'm gonna put a path through the seas. I'm going to make a way for you, but I want you to notice what he said. I'm doing a new thing. Yeah. And the way that you're going to get through this is the shift from a going back mentality to a moving forward mentality. 
Come on, let's be moving forward people. Let's be a moving forward church. Let's don't believe that life is going to go back to normal. Let's believe that we're going into better days, that God has ahead of us, and that God is using negative circumstances to produce a prevailing good in our life so that it'll work for our good and his glory because God is moving his people forward right now. Here's the second shift that I think we need to make in our life is we need to shift from impulsive decisions to permanent commitments. I don't know about you, but when, when, this first, when this first fell out, like everything about my life just fell apart. Like my diet just, it, it, was, it was the diet of a five-year-old. It was cheese puffs and Doritos and every snack food. I, I was comfort eating like crazy. My, my exercise, I'd been really faithful and then my exercise fell off and I, I was missing appointments. I haven't missed appointments in years, but something about the season just turned my world upside down and I was making impulsive decisions because the tendency is in temporary circumstances to make impulsive decisions. And when, when a season is prolonged in your life, like we're going through right now, we, we need to find out something, and that is God's not looking for us to make impulsive decisions. He's, making, he's wanting us to make long-term commitments. Yeah. I want you to notice what God said to them. He said, build houses. It takes a long time to build a house. Yeah. It takes 11 months to get the permit and another month to build the house. It <laughs> takes a long time. It takes a long time. But he didn't just say build the house. He said live in the house. He said plant some, plant some gardens. Not just plant them, but tend to them, keep them, grow them, and then eat the fruit, the produce of it. It takes a long time to see a plant go from a seedling to fully mature and producing fruit. That's a long-term commitment. He said, I want you to get married. I want you to have children. That's a, that's a long process. Even in biblical times, it took a long time to prepare for a wedding and then get married and then have children. And then he went on beyond that. He said, have, have, have children and then find spouses for their children. And that might be a word for some single person out there. He told the parents to find somebody for you. Hey, you may have struck out everywhere else. Maybe try mom and dad. Maybe, maybe go that route. Get desperate enough and you, you'll try anything. But he said, I, I want you to get married. I want you to have children. In other words, God is shifting them from a temporary mindset to a place of permanent commitments. That in a temporary season, God is wanting to bring your future to you. Like he's wanting to move you forward. He's wanting to bring your future to you. The enemy is wanting to take your future away from you. And so both, both of them right now are presenting things to us opportunities to bite on. And, and what happens is, is when we get into a season like this, we start making impulsive decisions. Esau was a, was a man in the Bible who had been given a birthright. It, it's, it's like an inheritance, a large inheritance. And he had all of this future ahead of him, a namesake, a, a property, finances. He had all of this ahead of him. But, but one day he went out hunting. He was a hunter. He'd been on a prolonged hunting trip. And when he got back from his hunting trip, he, he must have not caught any game or nothing that he could cook immediately. And he was hungry. Like not, not just like missed a meal hungry, like, like days hungry. And when he came back, his brother, who was a deceiver, who in this instance, God is going to transform him. But in this instance, he's really symbolic of the adversary of our lives. His brother has, has stew that is hot and ready to eat. And Esau is in this temporary famished position. And Jacob, his brother, offers him something immediate. And Esau, the Bible says, becomes a profane person. The way that it talks about Esau in this moment is incredible to me because Esau traded away his future on a temporary impulse to solve a short-term problem. Yeah. And right now, all of us are faced with opportunities to, to act impulsively. But what happens is impulsive decisions lead to temporary relief and long-term disappointment. Yeah. But permanent commitment leads to temporary discomfort, but long-term fulfillment. Yeah. That, that God's wanting to take you somewhere because impulsiveness leads to bondage, but commitment leads us to freedom. Yeah. 
And right now, I think it, because of the season that we're in, it, we're, we're tempted to live temporary lives and make impulsive decisions based on what's going on right now. But God says, I want you to find out who you are because here's what Esau should have done. Esau should have said, you know what? I've got a future. I know who I am. I know what's been promised to me. I know what's coming to me. And this temporary circumstance isn't gonna take away the future that I have. I'm not gonna let any of that that I'm going to find my identity and who I am right now. And right now is the season for some of us to begin to just put away impulsive decisions and know who we are in Jesus Christ, find out who our identity is right now, and know that I am making a permanent commitment to go after the promises of God in my life. I think right now in this season where there's scarcity, there's an impulse to go be, uh, be stingy and just refuse to give. I I think right now is actually the opportunity for us to say, no, I'm going to be a generous person. I'm going to believe that when I'm generous, God opens the windows of heaven, that God's going to be my provider. So I'm not going to go with my impulse to withhold. I'm going to go with the promises of God that says I'm going to be generous and the world of the generous is going to get larger and larger. I think right now the temporary impulse is to isolate ourselves and withdraw, but I think we need to make some permanent commitments that God has called us to be the people of God. So I'm going to get in a together group. I'm going to get in some community right now. I'm going to jump on Zoom and I'm going to be in a together group because I'm not going to let the enemy isolate me on an impulse. I'm going to make a commitment that God has promises for my life that when we get together, we are better together and we're going to make it through this together. I think right now the temporary impulse is to take a break from church because it's not live. I want to tell you that's an impulse we need to resist and we need to make some permanent commitments that God is still first in our life and he's still at the middle of our life because we're giving him the first of our week right here in our homes. We're not letting any of that stuff move us away from our identity. We are the people of God and we are committed to seeing the blessings of God come into our lives. I want to encourage you. There's a lot of people right now who are impulsively taking a break, but what I want to tell you is be careful about taking a break because like like Esau, you might be taking a break from your blessing. You might be taking a, sal a vacation from your salvation. And what we want for your life and what I believe God wants for your life is not for us to act impulsively, but this is the moment for us to dig deep in our principles and in our faith and make some commitments that we are going into the things that God has for us because these circumstances aren't gonna change who we are. We are the people of God. We're gonna live by the word of God and we're gonna see the promises of God come into our life because the end enemy wants to take our future away through an impulse. God wants to bring it into our life through some commitments that we make in this season. We need to shift from temporary to long-term. Here's, here's the third shift that I feel like we need to make is we need to shift from thinking it through to praying it through. Wow. God spoke to them in, in the letter and said, that you'll, when you seek me with all of your heart, you'll find me. When, when you begin to seek me. And what happens is there, there's moments, and I, I know our church seeks God. I, I know that many of us, we, our hearts are turned towards God. But what he was writing to them was in this season, it's a season not to just seek God, it's a season to step it up a notch and go whole hard into seeking God. Because I think, right now it would be really easy to just get caught in our emotional state or get caught in our mental state. And listen, I, I'm fully supportive of us growing in our wisdom, growing in our knowledge. Let's, let's use the minds God gave us to, to gain information. And we're doing that right now. We're using our minds to comprehend and receive the word of God. But can I tell you, I think this is a season for us to go a little bit deeper than just our minds. I think this is a season for us to go deep into the heart of who we are. And if you're not careful, you'll, you'll sit in this moment and you'll try to figure some things out in your life. And the problem is, is there's some things in this life we're never going to figure out. And I want to caution you about overthinking. Because you can't overthink some things, but you can't overpray some things. And right now we're thinking it through 
And I want to encourage you to begin to pray it through. Because I've been through some seasons, trust me. What I'm about to share with you, it comes from the Word of God, but it also comes from my heart. As I've been in some seasons where I tried to figure some things out, and I never could figure it out. And we can sit in this season and we can ask why, and we can try to figure out how, and we can try to figure out when. We can try to ask all of these questions and we can get so lost in our thoughts that the future begins to be about us and our ability. And I've learned this, that I've been through some things that I never was able to figure it out, but I just wanna give you a testimony. Even though I didn't figure it out, God was able to work it out. I still don't know how I got through some of the things I got through. I still don't know how God opens some of the doors and turn some of the seasons of my life. I don't know how. I never figured it out, but I want to tell you, we can pray and watch God work it out. I may not get all the answers I want, but I'm still going to get the future that God has for me because God's plans are solid and they're firm and they're certain in our lives. And I, I just want to, I want to encourage you. I think we're isolated. We're in this season where, where we're locked up in our minds we're, we're, we're thinking and we're thinking and we're thinking and we're, we're working with our, our mental ability to figure some things out. That's great. Let's learn. Maybe read a book. That's awesome. But don't think it through. Pray it through. I want to encourage you to do something. Grab, grab a journal. Maybe some of you don't even know how to pray. You don't know how to pray in this season. Grab a journal. You don't even have to vocalize your prayer. Just begin to write every worry and concern that you have down in a journal. Just, just begin to list everything that's on your heart and on your mind. I want to encourage you to do something. Our, our church has extended our season of our together groups. And if you don't know where else to go for prayer, I know where you can go for prayer. You can get in one of those together groups. They're open. They're wide open. You don't even have to go to our church. We'll let you in one because we want the ability to touch heaven on your behalf. Because here's the reality. You know what Jesus taught us on prayer? He said to pray this, your kingdom come in earth as it is in heaven. In other words, there are plans in heaven that God has for us. And right now, all of earth is locked down. But I want to show you what prayer is. Prayer is reaching up into the heavens. And when nothing is happening here on earth, we reach up into the heavens and we pull heaven down to earth. That we pull God's plans down into our life. And I, I want to give a moment right now in the presence of God. Listen, put your, put your notebook away. I know I asked you to take notes. Put your phone away. I, 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 want to, I want to move past something. We've been using our minds to receive instruction from the Word of God. But right now in this season, Come on, I want to I give us an opportunity to go with the heart, to let, to let some things in our heart begin to open up to God. Because God gave a promise. He said, you, if you'll seek me, you'll find me. You'll find me. And in that moment, restoration will begin to happen. In that moment, that God will begin to turn some things in your life. I just want to give you an opportunity right now to get out of your head and let your heart connect with the presence of God. You know, the Bible is going to come alive in this season. That a lot of the Psalms that we read were actually written to people who were in exile because they had determined that they couldn't make it to the temple to praise God. They couldn't make it to the tabernacle to connect with God. And so when they got put into exile, they didn't know what to do when they couldn't get to the physical place of worship. And so God sent psalmist after psalmist because they were at one point, they were gonna hang their harps up in the willow trees. They, they, were, gonna let, they were gonna let praise go out of their life because they, they couldn't go to the place where they sang songs to God, where they gave their offerings to God. They couldn't get to the physical place. And here's what I want to tell you, is you don't have to get to a physical place right now to connect with the heart of God, that where God wants to step in, it's not a tabernacle made by man. It's a tabernacle he built himself. It's the heart of where you are. And what God is looking for is he's not looking for a building. He's not looking for an edifice. He's not looking for a facility. He's looking for a heart that's longing for him right now in this season. Come on wherever you're at. This is a moment 
I want to encourage you just to begin to seek God. Come on. I want to pray for you. Father, I pray for every person that is connecting into the Word of God today. And maybe they're wrestling with why. And maybe they're wrestling with when. Maybe they're, they're working really hard in, in our mental ability to figure some things out that we may never figure out. But we do have this promise. Even when we don't figure it out, God, you're going to work it out. And right now in your presence, circumstances may not be changing. But God, you're changing us. You're growing your people. Right now, right now there's a shift happening. Come on, let it happen, let it happen. Right now there's a shift happening. Somebody has been longing and longing and longing to go back. And you're just realizing in this moment, the reason why you're frustrated is, it, is because God doesn't want you to go back. He's wanting to make a way in the wilderness. But the path that God is gonna create for you isn't a path to go back to your old life, it's to go back to something new that he wants to do in your life. Right now, come on, in the presence of God, there's a shift happening. A shift away from just, we're in a temporary circumstance, so we're making temporary and impulsive decisions. Right now, we're gonna dig deep into the promises of God. Come on, right now, somebody needs to make a commitment. I'm gonna build my life on the Word of God. Come on, I'm gonna plant a garden. I'm gonna sow my life into the kingdom of God. Come on, I'm gonna get married. I'm gonna get married to the things of God. That I, I, I'm creating a covenant with God. I'm entering in to a relationship with God that no circumstance is gonna break off of my life because I'm making long-term commitments because the enemy is wanting to take my future away by causing me to act impulsively. But this is a season that God actually wants to step in and just honor some commitments in my life that I'm moving into a place of my identity that nothing in this season is moving me away from being the person that God's called me to be, seeing the promises of God. And right now, Father, we're moving from thinking it through and we're praying it through. And we wanna see you move in our lives, in our homes, in our families, in our churches, God. We give our lives to you, we give our church to you. We declare that we know the plans you have for us. It's plans to prosper us, to give us a future, and to give us a hope. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. I want to pray one more prayer for those that maybe have never had the opportunity to receive Jesus as the Lord of your life and had an opportunity to maybe just surrender your life to God by receiving Jesus Christ. I want to tell you that one prayer could forever change your life. One prayer. And what happens is we try to figure out how we would live for God, how we would be a Christian. I want to encourage you. Don't try to figure it out. Let God's grace work it out in your life. Let God do the work. God wants to do the heavy lifting. He wants to step in with his grace and take away your sin, your shame, the regret, the mistakes, the disconnection that you feel, maybe even some of the anger, the anxiety. God wants to step in in this moment as we surrender our lives to Jesus. He wants to just do a work on us. Listen, not from the outside in. He wants to do a work from the inside out. And what God's looking for is he's looking for a heart that's turned towards him. Right now, if you've never prayed a prayer to receive Jesus or maybe you need to pray a prayer to come back home, I wanna lead you in this prayer. I'm gonna give you the words. You just say them from your heart as your heart is turn towards God right now. Come on, say this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Come into my life. Forgive me of my sin. Wash away my past. Make me a new person. Today I follow you. Commit to walk in your path and to follow your ways. And I'll never be the same. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen, amen. Come on, let's celebrate those that are making this decision today. And I wanna be one of the first people to say to you, welcome to the family of God.